All right, guys, uh, here we're going to talk about X-ray production. So X-ray production is um, really handy. They're called X-rays because they someone made these things and decided, uh, what are we going to call them? All the cool names have come up, uh, used up already, so X, because it's mysterious and things like that. Um, in order to make, so X-rays are uh, light, just like Roy G. Biv, just like infrared, just like ultraviolet, so it's um, electromagnetic radiation. So it's this as well. It just sits on a different part of the EM spectrum. And in order to make this, remember we need to accelerate electrons. So when we are generating um, uh, TV signal, radio antenna um, signal, that sort of thing, and we're trying to make this wave come out, what we're actually doing is making um, electrons run up and down this antenna and that's sending out an electromagnetic wave because in every unique point in space you've got a changing electric field and a changing magnetic field every time an electron uh, accelerates up and down. So um, this is no different except it kind of is different. All right so in this case here we're not just we're not speeding them up we're actually slowing them down. So in order to make these electrons uh, go through a really big strong intense acceleration um, instead of being a positive acceleration, we're going to slam them into an object. So uh, speeding them up, slowing them down, we can do that with really high potential differences. Um, in order to utilise uh, you know, a reasonably big potential difference and give this electron a lot of energy and then release all of that energy in one big hit as an, you know, a photon of X-ray light or uh, X-ray radiation, what we're going to do is um, slam them into a target. So this thing here, um, it is our it's positive, um, we've got something negative over here, um, this thing here is a filament, I'll get to that in a sec. What we're doing is making electrons accelerate across the x-ray tube and then they go bang and hit into this thing really really quickly. So all of that energy um, disappears really fast. So you've got a huge acceleration or deceleration which means that you release a lot of energy in a hurry. Um, so we uh, make these electrons really really fast so uh, there's an electric field between here, so there's a positive thing, there's a negative thing, electric field. So W equals Q delta V. Here's our uh, work done on our electron to you know, speed it up as it goes across. And what we're going to do is slam that into a target material. Now our target material is um, in most cases tungsten, but copper can be used, aluminium can be used, magnesium can be used, all these sorts of things can be used. But um, generally what you'll find in your lifetime is uh, tungsten being used simply because it's got a really uh, high atomic number, which means it's got a large, very large uh, positive nucleus. And this is important because we're, remember, we're slamming this into something really big to slow it down. Um, tungsten's reasonably dense, it's got a really big, large, positive nucleus. All of those protons in the nucleus bunched um, reasonably close together, uh, grab hold of this thing really, really quickly, which means that it slows down really, really fast. Uh, tungsten's also good because it's got a really high melting point. And I'm going to go 98%. Please find out the right answer. It's in the you know really high 90s percent of the energy um, is lost as heat. So we need something with a really high melting point in order to absorb all of that waste heat that we've got going on here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so now we've got uh, WQSQ delta V. Uh, this is the energy into the system. K is half mv squared. This is the energy that, so this is a voltage, this is a speed. Uh, this is the energy the electron actually uh, is given by the by the field, I guess, and this is the amount of kinetic energy it has at the end. These two numbers are the same thing. So we can say Q delta V is half mv squared. So, whoops, V is square root of 2 Q delta V on M. So if we ramp up the um, voltage across here, we're going to increase the speed. If we increase the speed, uh, we're going to increase the deceleration at the end. If we increase the deceleration, we increase the uh, power or penetration or energy per photon for the x-rays. Um, 
in order to generate these electrons themselves, what we've got is a filament. Um, it's exactly what you think it is, just like the filament in the light globe, it gets really hot. Um, and when it's really hot, all of these electrons are moving back and forth really fast, which means that they're able to jump or be kind of pushed off of this filament reasonably easily. Um, once they're off of that filament, they can go through this tiny little gap and be accelerated across the field until they hit the, um, the target material, the, the cathode, I think it is. Um, if we have a high filament current, uh, so this one, if we have a high filament current, what we're going to do, sure, yeah, that'll do. Um, we're going to get lots of electrons, which means that our um, uh, photons that we produce, we're going to get lots of them. It's not going to impact on the amount of energy they have, because remember, the energy is to do with the, the voltage across the gap. So we're not changing that, but we are changing the number of electrons that we're accelerating, which means, so if we get lots of electrons, we're going to get lots of X-ray photons. Now this is important if you're um, X-raying someone who's in significant pain or um, something like that and they, they can't really stay still for all that long. Um, having all of these photons go through all at once uh, can get the X-ray over and done reasonably quickly. There is a trade-off though that um, the window of opportunity to get a nice uh, contrast in the image that you're actually looking for um, is a little bit shorter so you have to be really kind of you know really know what you're doing and that's why it's like a four or five year degree to be a radiographer and why they get paid so much to do what they do all right the next thing I want to talk about is the potential difference or what we're going to start referring to um, the accelerating potential because it accelerates it's a potential difference that accelerates these electrons um, and that bad boy is here so what we're able to do is uh, increase or decrease the energy of the x-rays that we're making. So we have this um, amount of energy that the x-rays are going to have based on this thing here. If I set this to 50,000 volts, all of the electrons are going to come out with, so Q delta V, 50,000 electron volts, which we're going to abbreviate now to 50 keV, 50 keps. Um, so we've got this 50,000 electron volts worth of energy, and all of that energy goes into another metal surface, except this time we're focusing on the, the positive nuclei in, in here, and we're going to have a stream of electrons bombarding this thing, and as they go through they get accelerated and bend and all that sort of stuff, and as they kind of go through and bend, they're giving off photons. Every time they um, go through and bend, so they're accelerating, um, they give off a photon and it takes some of this 50,000 in this case of uh, energy away. This guy, however, goes bang straight into that one, gives off one 50,000 um, electron volt uh, photon. That might be a 10, that might be a 15, and then it would have you know a little bit more and whatever another 15 and then go bang into that one and give up the rest of the 25 that I had left. Alright, so every one of these electrons has 50,000 electron volts worth of energy to give up. It's whether it does it in one big hit like here or in several smallest um, hits like here as to what type of uh, spread of x-rays I guess you're going to get. Now what you'll see is a really funny word. Um, I'm going to write it in a way. It's probably the wrong way and it's called Remstrahlung. Um, I'm pretty sure there's meant to be a H or two in there, and this is the name given to the spread of X-rays. So if I put in um, a certain amount of energy, so a certain amount of energy here, I'm going to get a certain amount of energy given off here. Um, e is H F, so we're going to get a certain amount of uh, you know, energy or frequency for our photons. It's up to a point where we've got this maximum frequency. So that would be related to, in this case, the 50,000 electron volts all disappearing in one big hit. Now every single metal also has what's known as characteristic peaks, just like this. They're related to how far apart these protons are spaced and how far back the next layers are as well. Um, it's kind of like a, a fingerprint for those um, 
those different types of metals. So what I can do is raise uh, this, so my 50,000 volts, oh, sorry, 50,000 volts to change my 50,000 electron volts so that um, I can x-ray different things. So it might be that you want a spread of x-rays in here, um, so this might be somewhere around about 15,000. That might be good enough to do your hand if you've got, you know, broken wrist or something like that. Um, it might be that you want something so around, you know, 30 to 40, that might do like your arm. Um, and all the way up to, so x-rays go from say 5,000-ish electron volts all the way to through to several hundred thousand, so 250 to 300,000 to go through um, like a chest x-ray or, you know, through your thigh or something similar. Um, and this sort of spread or whatever um, variation in the types of photons you get out is really handy because you're not getting one photon from here that might perfectly go through your femur um, or might not, so you're not getting any contrast in the image. You're getting this spread, um, which means that some will go through, some won't go through, and you set that, um, the radiographer will set that so that you actually get a nice spread of um, x-rays, so you get a nice contrast in your image. Okay. Um, <coughs> A uh, couple of derivations in here. One I want you to look out for is this, and the last one that uh, I want to talk about is, um, but I won't do it now, I'll get you guys to do it, is relating this thing here to this thing here. Okay? See you guys.